simple ways to master self-motivation and self-discipline. Here we go. If you struggle in these areas, which most of us do, how do we get that discipline back? I'm gonna show you those. I'm gonna give you a simple three-step process before we leave here together today. And out of the gates, I would encourage you, focus on yourself. Focus on yourself, not other people. Very hard to do in today's world. Mm -hmm. We are on news feeds and we are constantly looking at what others are doing and we get more insight into others now more than we've ever had. We are surrounded by momentum killers, which is why I do these types of videos, not just solely focusing on health related videos because people fall short on their health goals because they lack the self-discipline, because they lack the self-motivation. We gotta be able to get self-motivated. You can jump on here and I will get you fired up a bit, but you gotta have your own momentum. Other people are momentum killers. Social shows a ton of them. Negative people around you, not momentum killers we talked about. The news is a momentum killer. Misinformation is a momentum killer. Here you are cutting out your carbohydrates. You've been dialed in for eight weeks and someone's like, oh, oh, did you know? Did you know that meat kills you? Did you know that you can't eat that vegetable because it's full of toxic? Like you're like, what? Misinformation, momentum killer. So sometimes you just gotta put some blinders on like the horses at a Kentucky Derby and you gotta run your race. Clickbait is a momentum killer. You're, like, you're just like, what? Water is bad? <laughs> we shouldn't drink it? So you're getting too much sleep? Why? Like just like the clickbait, like rub this on your arm and you'll magically lose 20 pounds? Like the clickbaity stuff throws us off. We gotta get focused. So number one, just some tips here, and then we're gonna bring this all together. So that kind of leads into careful what you put into your mind. Mm. You conform to what you consume mentally. You conform to what you consume. So what are you consuming and when? I think about the drive to work is probably the biggest opportunity a lot of people may have. Maybe you're remote now, so this doesn't count or maybe it's during a workout or during a walk or during a quiet time in the morning, what are you putting in? Is it getting filled up with the email inbox? I've been guilty of that before. Or is it you know, an opportunity, YouTube video, right? We got playlists put together, we got helpful tips put together, a podcast, we got our, all of our talks onto a podcast format now, or there's tons of good ones out there that are very motivating and inspiring. You could read a few chapters in a book by listening to the audio version of it while you're doing these things, especially on 2X speed. I might be a little rough on 2X speed. You might not want to go rough. there. You're natural. I'm it's naturally 2X. at 2X, but I am efficient. You could be reading 50 books this year with your hour drive to work. So careful what you're putting into your mind. You conform to what you consume. And if it all it is, all it is, is the morning radio show that makes you laugh a little bit, but is really not contributing, then you might end up feeling stuck or not very motivated because you didn't put something in that was enhancing that. Third tip that I'll give you before we dive into how to practically put this together is discomfort equals growth. Gotta get comfortable being uncomfortable. And this never ceases as a human being. Recently, just cranking up the amount of helpful videos that we're putting together for you, especially um, here on YouTube. You can subscribe and there is a prefla every single day of a video coming out to help make health simple for you, whether it's from a motivational standpoint or very practical on a condition or something you're struggling with. And just doubling, tripling, quadrupling the output that I wanted to do for all of you, it was kind of uncomfortable <laughs> to get started and get it going and get it, even though I've recorded, like I've spent thousands of hours in front of the camera. It wasn't so much in front of the camera, it's just like the process of getting that going. There's an uncomfortableness. There's a, I was like, what is one of the most uncomfortable times I've been in my life? And it was, I felt this feeling and I knew it was brewing up and I knew this was it. And I knew I needed to get this out of me. And I knew, I thought how it was going to land and that it would be reciprocated but I just didn't know when to do it because you've never really done that before to finally say that. And I didn't know exactly if it was gonna go as planned because you don't have any practice. And sometimes when you do uncomfortable things before, you've never been there before, you've never practiced it, you've never been through it, you don't have the experience, you don't have the wisdom. But I sat around that couch that day 
in this little apartment in Cedar Falls, Iowa, and I'm falling in love with you. <laughs> I'm in love with you. Aww. And then the magic happened. Was that uncomfortable? What, that was uncomfortable. I got that pit in the stomach. I'm kind of sweaty. Aww. I'm kind of, I'm kind of nervous, but it's good. But you know, it, it could be, it could be listed as excitement, or it could be listed as nerves. They're pretty much the same thing. But I was uncomfortable. And I'm like, I, I love you. And I heard the words back. <laughs> I got the three back, and then here we are. That's hilarious. Uncomfortable. That was the most uncomfortable spot. But then you have to lean into that because it creates. Good stuff. Now I'm real comfortable. <laughs> so let's put this together. Right? Your input determines your outcomes is the sum up of that. Focus on yourself, not others. That's what we need to do. We need to be careful what we're putting into our mind because you conform to what you consume and we need to get uncomfortable to make progress because we need to learn good, new things, go through new experiences, gain new wisdom. So your input determines your outcome. Here's the truth. We all experience undesirable outcomes because we have unhealthy inputs. Mm -hmm. We don't get the outcomes we want because we're not putting the right stuff in. So most people in society, this is it, you ready for it? Most people, don't miss this, this is very important, obsess about the outcome, the weight loss, the health goal, the financial goal, the marriage goal, the relationship, the outcome of it. But true succeeders, if you want to be a true succeeder, which I think if you're listening to this right now, you do, they obsess about inputs. Mm. What's going in? That's good. So to improve your inputs, how do we do this? We know the things we need to fix our focus and some tips on, right? Controlling what's going in. But focus on two what's and a who. Two what's, one who. Okay, what goes in must come out. Put in good energy and feeling great comes out. What you do today for the inputs strengthens the results of tomorrow. So the what needs to go in, and I gave you the tips on it of focus on yourself, put the blinders on, careful what you put in. Just change an activity of what you're listening to this week. What content goes into your spirit, your soul, your, what is the input? Even the music you're listening to. There's the what. Pick two what's that you can do that might be a little, even a little bit uncomfortable at first. Lean into that and switch your habits of the two what's that you do during your day, during your week. And then a who. Who can you put into your head? that's going to be beneficial. A positive, motivating, encouraging voice, word, book, doctor. <laughs> who can you put in? So who, who are you going to insert in your life? And the beauty of today's digital world is you can tap into anyone. Anyone can be your mentor. You don't have to know them, you don't have to have a conversation, you don't need their cell phone number. Anyone can that has success, that has something you desire, that lives their life in a way that you want. So two what's that you're gonna be doing this week, this month, today. One who get one new who on your side. It is fascinating how powerful it can be when you get the right who's around you because you start to become who you're around. And you can be around anyone you want. You could be around a former president. You could be around a, a business leader. You could be around a, a, a church leader. You could be just by reading their books, listening to their podcasts, listening to their audio visual. So two what's and a who. So kind of broke that down into three tips for you to master self-motivation and self-discipline. We really got to focus on the inputs. And then three practical ways to really look at this, to quantify it, two what's, one who. Three and three. There it is. Three simple ways. So what are your two what's? Who is your who? Let's define that right now. What are your two what's you want to get in? Who is your who? Someone you know you need more of. If it happens to be Dr. Living Good, I put some more resources below in this video to encourage this message along. And I bring motivational messages at least once a week to help you in your journey to make health simple. So Follow, subscribe to the page, 
I try to balance both of those to be very practical, but also to get your spirit and your habits, your self-discipline, your motivation going the right way as well. So check out those resources, subscribe. I'll be back real soon. Here's the resources for you.